Hello everyone, in this session I'm going to be explaining the FTX collapse from one single angle and that's angle is mark to market accounting so I am not going to be discussing anything about the failure of internal control of FTX there is a lot can be said about this maybe in a separate recording or a separate few separate sessions and I would like to disclose one thing I am not familiar with crypto trading so maybe there are certain terminologies I might use they, they may not be 100% perfect because I'm not familiar with this topic itself but I can explain from an accounting perspective mark to market what happened and what should we learn as accountant as auditors what should be on the lookout for before we proceed any further i have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com farhat accounting lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your cpa exam preparation as well as your accounting courses my cpa material is aligned with your cpa review course such as becker roger wiley gleam miles my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics my resources consist of lectures multiple choice questions true false questions as well as exercises go ahead start your free trial today no obligation no credit card required the first thing i'm going to give an overview of the three main players in this collapse so this way you have a good idea what's going on and that's ftx binance and alameda research what was ftx ftx was one of the th large cryptocurrencies the third largest one by volume and crypto hedge fund simply put what you do is you can deposit your cryptocurrency and keep it with ftx that's that's basically the idea and you can trade it you can sell it you can buy so on and so forth and they do trading as well because they do crypto hedge funds so simply put they trade and who was in charge this fellow here which is we should all know who he is SBF Sam Bankman Sam Bankman Freed now Binance is the largest exchange in the world in terms of daily trading volume of cryptocurrency so this is basically number one some people think this FTX was number two some think number three it doesn't matter just know Binance was, the, was another exchange now what's why do we have to learn about this this company Binance was run by this guy abbreviated as CZ or his name is Champing Zhu and Binance used to own 20% of FTX but last year which is 2021 Binance sold their 20% equity in FTX and Sam Bank Sam Bankman Freed paid for this partly he paid using FTT token what is FTT token basically the token the money that they use on the exchange they paid cash but they also paid FTT token it's worth mentioning the exit was not an amicable one and what was happening Sam Bankman Freed was trying to register in different countries and since Binance owned 20 percent he was giving him hard time giving him the proper disclosure in order to be able to file on, on various foreign exchanges but that's a different story you can read about this but the point is it was not a friendly exit that's the point and and Binance now have FTT token Alameda research is a trading firm basically they trade digital currency which is they trade all sorts of digital currency it was co-founded by SPF and it was losing money trading so that's important to know and it was run by Caroline Allison who happens to be SPF girlfriend so this is the relationship between the three so those are the three players so on November 2nd coindesk article what is coindesk basically think of it as a new site for the cryptocurrency industries they published an article that alameda research balance sheet shows 16.4 billion in asset well that's fine you have 16.4 billion of assets of which 8 billion was ftt tokens now think of ftt tokens because i'm my, myself i'm not familiar with cryptocurrencies as units or stocks basically you know stocks that are worth 8 billion now again you're going to be taking some units times the price to come up with the fair value of 8 billion now here's the problem with this once this article came out november 2nd about alameda research so why would they have that many for for one thing notice for one thing 50 close to 50 percent of their assets is ftt token think about a company that's that's in trading and 50 percent of their assets is in one asset FTT token it's not only in one asset remember there's a re relationship between FTX and Alameda so something is questionable okay so 50% of your assets is 
is this number is most likely we're going to see it was even fake why is why was it fake because if you look at the ftx website they say they only have 190 million ftt in circulation well if there are 197 million units in ftt circulation the price as of june 20th was 24.53 so if you take 24 this is the closing prices of june 30th if you take 24 dollars and 53 cent and let's assume alameda had all the token that's out in circulation it will be approximately let me just do the math one more time 24.53 it should be approximately 4.8 rounded uh, you know 4.8 to 4.8 billion that's the maximum they should have why do they have 8 billion in FTT token. So this has started to raise a question about what's going on at Alameda Research and why would they have all these FTT tokens? So something is wrong right there. This is mark to market accounting. And, you know, the, the question is, what was the auditor thinking? What was the accountant thinking? And we're going to know later on how, how did they come up with this number, 8 billion, where it, it really did not exist. Even if you said, you know, the price treated the price, you have to treat the price if it was 28 and some change to come up with this value so there is maybe let me see 120 197 if you value it at 28 dollars you would still come up at 5 billion it has to be way way more um, so again we're going to learn more about this but this is mark to mark accounting now what's the price of ftt today who has i'm doing this recording it's 86 pennies so now what you have to do is take 196 million multiplied by 86 pennies that's the value of the ftt token so you know what happened it, it collapsed and let me show you what happened so this is this is november 2nd this is when the article came out let me change colors here so you would see this is where basically some place here right some place here this is November 2nd. This is when the article came out and the price was approximately $25. Now the price started to drop, then suddenly dropped substantially. Now we need to know what happened from this date, from November 2nd till November 10th, basically, till November 10th. This is where the big drop is. So let's see what happened between those two dates. On November 6th, which is four days later, now you have to keep in mind there was, you know, stuff going on between Binance and FTX. Remember, they're not friendly. Okay, so here's what CZ tweeted. As part of our Binance exit from FTX last year, we received 2.1 billion in USD equivalent in cash, which was this token and FTT. Due to the recent revelations, which is about the balance sheet of Alameda, which is a company related to FTX, well, we are going to, we decided to liquidate any remaining FTT. So what he said, he said, I am going to sell my FTT position because I don't trust FTX. And when a person that used to own 20% of the company is selling all these shares, obviously, if, if everything is good, the price will go down. Like, for example, when Elon Musk sells his Tesla shares, the price go down. Basically, you are supplying more units. You're selling more. Well, the law of supply and demand, the prices will go up. So as a result, as you try to sell, more people will try to sell as well. And the price will keep on dropping because everyone wants to exit before you exit. And guess what? The price will crash. On November 6th, too, liquidating our FTT is just post-exit risk management. Learning from Luna, which is some other experience, we we gave support before, but we won't pretend to make love after divorce, which is because, again, they were part of FTX, but now they sold their position. We're not against anyone. Notice here, there was some animosity going on going on but we won't support people who lobby against other industry players behind their backs onwards so what he's talking about ss he's talking about sbf why a lot of rivalry between the two fast forward till november 8th so two days later this afternoon ftx ftx asked me for our help so now ftx contacted him said okay would you be interested in buying us uh, you know, there's a significant liquidity crunch to protect users. We sign a non-binding letter of intent intending to fully acquire FTX. Now they're saying on November the 8th, yeah, yes, we, 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 we'll we we'll take a look at your company. Yes, we might buy you to get you out of this liquidity crunch because when the price was going on, everybody was liquidating, okay, to cover the liquidity crunch. We will be conducting a full DD, due diligence, in the coming days. Due diligence means what? It means open your books and let's see what's there because we're going to buy your company. Well, guess what? From November 2nd till November 10th, they learned what they needed to learn. And what they find out is SPF was, there was a lot of fraud going on and they discovered what's going on between Alameda and FDX and 8 billion were missing, 8 billion in cash. And this is the 
letter that they that this is the letter that he published on November the 10th and this is what happened between the 2nd and the 10th and this is why the collapse occur basically those are what was what was happening so he just said you know we found so many ir irregularities you could read the article but the point is they find out internal control were not good um you know <laughs> we should not be touching this company it's a lot of liabilities so on and so forth and now the price again is 86 pennies basically you know <laughs> worthless in a sense because again they're, they're in they're in bankruptcy so the point is it's mark. It was a mark to market accounting from Alameda Research. If they had, if they had good internal control, I know I'm not going to talk about good internal control, but I have to talk about this. We cannot not talk about this. Like, how did Alameda had eight billion in assets for assets that was not worth eight billion? Okay, that that that's that's mark to market accounting. It's a, it, it cannot be a mistake. It's definitely fraudulent. Again, we would learn more. I hope you find this interesting because I was trying to follow this, but I guess that's the um, shortest amount of time I can give you the big picture of this again we would learn more and more this is this can be a course by itself about internal control and accounting fraud good luck everyone stay safe and if you're an auditor always be on the lookout always be skeptic even if you might look stupid ask stupid questions um, verify everything verify everything mark the market accounting should not be difficult especially if the prices are available uh, do your due diligence keep us proud and stay safe and study hard.